Renewable energy, like wind and solar, has created a hidden infrastructure problem. The issue is that power grids, which carry electricity to homes and businesses, weren't designed for wind and solar. And even though renewables have become a larger part of the overall power supply, grid infrastructure hasn't kept up. It's why some grid experts say renewables contributed to the severity of the blackout across Spain and Portugal in April. Conventional power plants, like coal and natural gas, have inertia built into their design. This is a 3D printed model of a gas turbine. So we burn the natural gas here and it creates this large spinning piece of rotating machinery. And this thing, this whole deal, is connected to a generator that might be sitting over here that produces our electricity. All conventional power plants produce electricity that matches the frequency on the grid, which is 60 hertz in the U.S. If a power plant goes down, the inertia provides buffer time for other energy sources to jump in. The grid can only tolerate a small change in frequency, anything too drastic, and power plants will disconnect from the grid to protect themselves from damage. Using more renewable energy and fewer conventional power sources means there's less inherent inertia in the network, which can increase the risk of widespread blackouts. Most inverters at renewable power plants today are grid following, meaning they rely on the grid's voltage and frequency. So if there's an outage, the inverter loses its reference and can't function. Grid forming inverters are more advanced. They can operate independently and support the grid when there's a disruption. Here's how they work. The solar panel produces direct current. You could imagine it as sort of a constant supply of current coming out of the solar panel. But our grid operates on alternating current. And so we need to take this blue line and we need to turn it into a waveform that's operating at 60 hertz. That's what a grid forming inverter does. And because it's adjusting everything electronically, it can react to frequency changes much faster than a conventional generator. It also has an endless supply of synthetic inertia. Todd's second solution to renewable energy's lack of inherent inertia is something called a synchronous condenser. Instead of actually injecting natural gas into this system, we actually take electricity from the solar panel and we get this large spinning mass that provides additional rotational inertia. He says ideally, this should be paired with a grid forming inverter to get the best of both worlds. So our third opportunity to improve the resilience of the grid would be to have backup power supply, what we call battery energy storage systems, or BESS. If there's an unexpected outage, batteries can deploy excess energy to stabilize the grid. As renewable energy becomes more prevalent, Todd says the key to reducing the risk of widespread outages is to keep building and improving the infrastructure supporting it.